In this video, I want to introduce the concept of climatograph and the patterns that you're going to see in these graphs. Now, I already talked to you about this. It's, it's the graphs that scientists use to show the climate of a region. And they have two major pieces of information. They will show you where the region is. They will also tell you like the um, temperature throughout the year, throughout the months, and it will tell you the precipitation throughout the months. That's because if you had to say what are the two main factors that would determine what a biome is like, you're going to have to say there's going to be how hot the place is or the temperature, which is basically how much solar energy that place is receiving and how wet or how humid or how much precipitation falls in that place. So if you know those two things, you can understand why a biome is different from the other. And that's actually all that matters for biology class that you understand. Nobody's going to ask you specifics about the biome. No one wants to know. Uh, nobody's going to ask you what, are, what animals live here, what plants live here, uh, what are the biotic factors like, what are the abiotic factors like, what, what are humans doing to this, to this environment. These are all important things, and I wish we had time to explore all of them. But, and you can always do that if you take an environmental science class. We'll talk, they talk about that in more detail there. But in a general biology class, all they expect you to know is that biomes change if the temperature and the precipitation changes. And so by understanding that, you can, you can know it enough. And so it's very important that you understand the concepts of climatographs. So you see here examples of three climatographs, and we're going to talk about patterns that you can see in these climatographs and what they mean. Now, notice that in this place in China here, all right, temperatures are varying between 68 Fahrenheit and 89, 90 Fahrenheit or, or 15 to 30 uh, Celsius. But that there's a wide variation between the months of the year. You also see that the precipitation varies a lot too. But that the temperature and precipitation seem to peak around the June, July. Why is that? That's because it's summer, so there's more heat and there's also more evaporation, so there's more rain. It's also the monsoon months in that area of the world, right? So you also have here another area of the world, which is like Alaska. Now notice the biggest difference between the two of them uh, is that the temperatures are a lot lower than they were in China, right? They were like, Because it's much higher in the world, right? So look at the latitude there. The latitude is 57 degrees north. And so it's going to be a lot, a lot colder there. So the maximum temperature is, is basically what the minimum was for the, for the China. And it, of course, goes way below zero on certain times of the year. Now, you also notice that the precipitation values, though, are higher in this area. And that's probably because there's local wind patterns that bring rain to, to that area. So that's interesting. Now, notice at Cape Town, Africa. The first biggest difference that I notice is there's less variation in the temperature. That's actually very interesting. It doesn't seem like it varies much throughout the year, and it's pretty mild temperatures throughout the entire year. And I also notice that in July, the temperature is actually low instead of high like the other two were. Why is that? Well, that's because that's in the southern hemisphere, right? So if it's in the southern hemisphere, it's winter in July, so it's the coldest month of the year. So these are already showing you some of the things that I want to talk about. So let's talk about the patterns that you need to know for climatographs. And we'll look first at just the temperature pattern. All right, just the temperature. So I'm going to make three lines over here. One line is going to represent a tropical area. So T for tropical in red is going to see, let's say that this right here is like 30 degrees Celsius. That's pretty hot. And let's say about 15, about zero, and anything below that is going to be zero. Okay, so now let's say a certain ecosystem has temperatures that look like this and by the way this is going to be January that's going to be your middle of year July and that's December now what is that telling you that's telling you that the temperature is not varying much throughout the year but that towards the middle of the year the temperature increases what can you tell from this information well you can tell it's a tropical area that's why I marked it with it red because in the T because it's going to be uh, very, very little. And in a tropical area, throughout, throughout the entire year, the temperature is pretty high. So that's why it's going to be like that. You can also notice there's a slight dip north. So if the dip, if the little curve is in this direction, that's another thing that I want you to know. If you see a curve in this direction, that means an arrow this way, you know that's in the northern hemisphere. Why? Because in July, it's hotter. So it's just like, you know, it is in, in North America. But if you see the opposite pattern, if you see something like that, then the dip is going down, which means it's going to be in the southern hemisphere because it's colder 
in July, right? Does that make sense? All right, good. Now, so there you know that this is going to be a uh, I'm going to do a drawing all northern hemisphere from now on, but notice that Cape Town was southern hemisphere and that was down. So from now on, if you ever see that, expect to know that's the southern hemisphere. So the direction of the dip will tell you if it's south, south, or north. Now, what if you saw a different one? Let's put this in green, something like this. Now, this graph has this, almost a similar pattern from the first one we looked at. So we also know it's the northern hemisphere because it's also facing up like that one. So we know it's the northern hemisphere as well. But we noticed that it's a lot colder during the winter months than the first line was. But it's not that much cold. And in fact, it is actually uh, mild. This is what we call a temperate zone. A temperate zone. All right, so you can tell it's a temperate zone for two reasons. First, because it's cold but not too cold, and also because there's a great difference between the minimal temperature and the maximum temperature. So this is the one, it's going to be the graph that varies the most. Like the China here, it's a temperate zone because it's varying a lot throughout the year. What about a graph that looks like this? This one, you also see it's the northern hemisphere because, it's, again, it's facing the north, it's facing up, so that means July is the hottest. But notice that there's a less difference between the maximal and the minimal temperature and that the temperatures are very, very cold. What does that mean? It means that this is going to be a polar region. So these are the patterns that you're supposed to know how to identify. If the temperatures are usually really low and never get really high, it's probably polar, like Alaska over here. If it's going to be mild, then it's going to be... Uh, temperate and it usually there's a big difference between the maximal and the minimal and if it is barely changed it's, it's probably tropical there are exceptions like Cape Town for example is not really tropical but uh, there are other factors which could have caused that to be like that but either way typically when it varies not much like that line over there that means it's tropical and remember that if it faces up, it's northern hemisphere, and if it faces down, it's southern hemisphere. And the closer you get to the equator, the last variation is going to be between the minimal and the maximal. If you know these patterns for temperature, you're going to be in good shape. Now, when it comes to precipitation, you should also be able to see patterns. And we're going to see that when we talk about the tropical biomes on the next video. But I also want to talk about that right now. And let's say, for example, you have a tropical biome. So remember, these are all going to be tropical biomes. All of them are going to have extremely hot temperatures throughout the entire year. So let's say, so let's say you have pretty much solid hot temperatures throughout the year. So they're all tropical. But we're going to change precipitation now. We're going to make one have more rain than the other. So let's see what's going to happen there. So let's say... Uh, this one in the month of January it doesn't rain very much but it rains quite a lot and then it rains more and more and more and more so as you as the months of the year go by it, it rains and this is an awful job that I'm doing here at putting this graph but it, I'm just trying to show a point right so let's say you have a pattern like this with a lot of rain throughout the entire year there may be some months that have more rain than others but there's always a lot of rain so it's really hot in a lot of rain what would you expect to see there I won't give the answer out yet. We'll talk about that in a second. Or another one where there's barely any rain. So like throughout the entire year, very little, very, very little water. All right? Or what about one that has like a season that's really, really wet, all right? But the rest of the year, it's pretty dry. It doesn't rain much at all. So what is the difference between these biomes? Notice that the temperature is the same for all of them, but since they have different amounts of water, it's going to be a different biome. This is going to be a rainforest, water all the time. That's going to be a desert, and that's going to be a grassland or a savanna. So you see that even though they have the, about the same temperature, the difference in the amount of, temp, uh, of precipitation is what makes the biomes change. So that makes you realize then that the biomes will change depending on the amount of water and the amount of temperature. The same thing is going to be true if you start messing with the temperature, but they leave the precipitation about the same. You're going to get a different biome. Although typically, when you have less heat, you have less rain. And we'll see that in the next video when we start talking about the patterns as we talk about the biomes. I'll see you guys then.